here's a big question. What makes me who I am? What determines my personality? Is it something I'm born with and just have no choice? Or is it something that is infinitely malleable and changeable? Are we just a, uh, a blank screen that anybody can write on based on experience? Well, it turns out that it's a combination of both. Everybody comes into the world with a certain precondition or preset on their personality. And if you think about it, that's not so strange. We all, if you look around a room full of people, we're all different physically, and we're also all different mentally. And part of this comes from what we inherited from our relatives that's sort of hardwired into our brains, but that's not the whole story, because we know that brains are very malleable. And experience then works on those predispositions to determine the ultimate outcome of the kind of person you're going to be. So for example, if somebody is big and strong and muscular and sits around all day watching television, they're not going to become an athlete. But if they take that skill, they go out on the ball field, their parents encourage them, they take that talent and maximize it, then yes, that person is going to become a professional athlete. And you can apply that to any other kind of endeavor, whether it's business or art or science. And it's the same thing with the two main building blocks of, temper of, of personality, which are temperament and cognitive style. Temperament is the general emotional tone that people have. You look around a room and you know people that you are friends with or, or relatives that you have, and you know that people vary in terms of being very easygoing and lighthearted and take things in stride, all the way to the other extreme of being hot-headed and upset and irritable and cynical and sarcastic all the time. And most of us are somewhere in the middle of that bell curve. But everybody has a certain basic temperament that determines how they're going to react to certain situations. Some people are going to sort of reflect and sit back and try to figure out what's going on. Others are going to react immediately. And connected to the concept of temperament is the concept of cognitive style, how we think. And again, think about people you know. In fact, think about your own self. Are you an analyzer? Or are you a homogenizer? Do you tend to see things in terms of holes and, and broad brush stroke, strokes, or do you tend to break things down to tiny little parts and analyze them? So when you take these things and you put them together, you take a person, for example, who does a lot of analysis and breaking things down, and has a very quick emotional kind of reaction style. That's the person who may be anxious, obsessive, even paranoid at times, because they're analyzing and analyzing and sometimes overanalyzing to the point where it becomes dysfunctional. On the other extreme, you have the person who is very laid back, never thinks about anything, uh, doesn't see the forest for the trees, just looks at the broad strokes of things. That's the kind of person who's never going to get anything done because nothing excites them except what excites their whim and impulse of the moment. And that's going to be on the other side of the dysfunctional curve. Most of us are somewhere in between that. How we react to situations, how we react to people, is some combination of temperament and cognitive style. Some of this we're born with, but others are shaped by experience. There's an interesting concept in psychology called gene-environment correlation. You know, what is the nature part, what is the nurture part? And most scientists, in fact most people, don't have a problem with the concept of, well, if I have a particular genetic predisposition, I'm sort of like a bag of genetic cake mix that you just add environmental water to and stir thoroughly, and that will determine the kind of person I am. And in many cases, that's the, that's the case. But there's also something called active gene environment correlation. And here's how it works. Let's say I do have a talent for music. Let's say I do have a talent for sports. Or, on the other extreme, let's say I do have a talent for crime and mayhem. Guess what? People have an amazing ability to find areas and opportunities to do the things that they want to do. So if I am a musician and all my friends are athletes, I will find the one other kid in the school that plays another instrument and I'll form a band with that kid. If I like to read and I want to become a writer and a novelist, I'll find the one library in town that has the books I want to read. So what that means is individuals with particular biological or genetic predispositions actually seek out environments that in turn reinforce those predispositions. And so these things become self-fulfilling prophecies. So it's not just we're at the helpless whim of the environment or helpless whim of the genetics. We determine our fates every day. And most of us have a personal narrative that guides our life. We have a story about ourselves that we tell. You know, I was born here, these are my parents, this is my family, this was my education. It gives our life a certain continuity, a certain type of meaning. So if you have the elements of temperament, elements of cognitive style, and a narrative that explains your life, then that's what contributes to the building blocks of personality. 
In some cases, this can be a negative life story and a negative narrative. And here the key is to find some help in turning that around so it could be something positive and something enhancing for your particular life.